Today I have for you four super beautiful and very easy magnolia inspired dupes. The first inspiration piece is this beautiful window that I loved it. The moment I saw it, I was like, ooh, I think I can make this one. But it was $116, and I guarantee you I can make it for a lot less. So this 1x2, I usually have on hand here at home. It was an 8x2 by 8 feet, and I'm just going to cut two pieces on a longer end and then two smaller pieces. And that's what's going to be our window or the window frame. Now I'm going to use some, um, this is the Chalked Glaze in the Brown by rust -Oleum. And I'm just going to stain each piece using this. You can use any stain you want if you're going to recreate something similar. I just, this is what I had on hand and I love using it because it doesn't have a strong scent and is really easy to work with. Now, the skewer sticks I already had on hand as well, of course, from cooking <laughs> and I'm going to stain them the same color and here's a little trick for you if you got to stain little dowels like this you just want to stain put them all together stain and then keep rolling them and staining them together and it'll be easier than staining one at a time I thought I thought about that and I was like there's no way <laughs> I'm going to stain one at a time so this worked really well now we're going to put the frame together and for the purposes of keeping it very simple with minimal tools, I am going to use my stapler. This is an electric stapler that I've had for many years. I got it at the hardware store. It's an Aero brand and I am using the larger staples that I can use on it. And I'm going to staple on the joints both on the front as well as the back of the frame. Now I'm going to use a square here and I'm just going to start marking where I want to drill a few holes so I'm, I want everything to be very even and look very professional and very clean so I'm going to really take my time and make sure that I am measuring and that everything is as exact as possible but of course nothing is going to be perfect and I'm always okay with that but we just want to do everything that we can for it to be nicely done now I'm going to drill a hole using a drill bit that's going to fit the skewer sticks perfectly and I'm going to pre-drill them and that way we can start um, putting together the middle portion of the design of the window. That was the part that took the longest so I'm not going to have you see everything. I'm going to speed it up quite a bit for you but I'm going to show you here first. So what I'm doing here I'm just kind of measuring or putting in this skewer stick and then using my square there again to make sure that I'm cutting exactly where I need to cut and then I'm going to do that on all four corners and I'm going to secure everything with hot glue. So once I have everything cut and I know everything is in the size that I need, I'm going to start using some hot glue and putting everything together. Now it's time to start working on the middle portion of the design. So again, I'm just using my square here and making sure that both sides are equally measured, pre-drilling the holes, and we're gonna do the same exact thing that we did in the corners, except it's just gonna have a little different design. Um, but same process, drilling the holes, adding some hot glue, then the skewer sticks, and then cutting as needed. I also want to let you know that DIY Beauty on Purpose now has memberships. If you want to join and have special perks, make sure to click down in the description box and click the little join on my channel for more details. We're almost done. We're just going to add the crisscross portion of them. So I'm just going to, again, measure, cut, and hot glue, and we're going to have two X's, one on the bottom and one on the top.
And we are basically done. And I am extremely proud and so happy with the way it turned out. Is it exactly the same? No, it's a little lighter in color, but I actually like this tone better. But let me remind you what it looked like before and then what it looks like now. I think it's absolutely stunning. I love the way it turned out. I think it's pretty close to the original, except for a few details, of course. But overall, I'm very happy with the end result. For the next inspiration piece, I like to recreate this There Will Be Miracles sign they had on their website. And I really love the way it looked. And I know it's going to be a challenge because of the color it had. But we're going to start with this Dollar Tree sign. And I'm going to remove the jute twine. And I contemplated moving, or I tried moving the paper off of it because it did have glitter. But that was not working out. So I ended up just sanding it down. That way we didn't have the glitter on the back. Now we're going to round off the edges just a little bit because the original piece had rounded edges. So I'm going to use these shears that I got on Amazon, which by the way, a lot of the supplies, tools, and paints that I use, I do have on my Amazon store. And I do have a link down below if you'd like to check it out. Once I had the corners cut, I did sand them down using a sanding block from the Dollar Tree. And um, that way it was nicely smooth. So now it's time to start to try to recreate the color. So I'm going to use the several colors here from Artisa as well as some from rust -Oleum. I'm just going to keep adding until I have the very salmon kind of uh, coral color that the original piece had. So I did add too much paint, but you know, it's just, I just didn't know how much more I needed to add. So we're going to start with this one. Now I think it's a little darker. So uh, through the process of painting here and blending, I am going to keep lightening it up and um, adding paint as I need. And I end up actually adding a little bit of this chiffon cream by rust -Oleum because the original piece, if you remember, it had like a lighter tone in the center. So um, I want to have it again as close as to the original as possible. So I'm just going to let you watch here how I blend the colors until I get close to what I was looking for. So once it was dry, which it took about an hour because it was so thick, all the paint that I added, I'm just going to sand it down just a little bit to soften everything out. And then I cut out the phrase, there will be miracles, just like the original piece. And I try to find a font that was as close as possible to the original. And I'm just going to put it on the center and I am going to stencil it using um, Waverly and taking wax because I did it did have more of a brown tone the original piece it wasn't black so I thought using the antiquing wax was a close match Also, don't forget that I am on Instagram. So if you have an Instagram account, I'd love to connect with you there I do have the link down below in the description box and look how pretty it looks. Doesn't it look? I love the contrast of that color and the brown. I think it looks pretty cool. Now, the original piece had four holes in each corner. So I am going to do that using this drill bit. Um, and again, if you have like maybe a hole puncher or whatever you you know may want, you can always do that as well. But I'm just going to drill them here and then we're basically done with this one. And I'm going to remind you what the original piece or the inspiration piece looked like and then what mine looks like. I'm so happy with it. I think it looks so cute. I love the color. I love the way it turned out. I think it's pretty close to the original. It's not leather like the original, but I think design and look wise, it looks pretty cool. For the next inspiration piece, I'm going to take this coffee bar sign that I saw only for $10, but I thought I could make it for basically free. This piece of paneling was in my garage. It was actually on the top of my miter saw. Somehow it ended up there and I don't know where it came from, honestly. And I just threw it, threw it here and I'm just going to cut it now using my miter saw to about 10 to about 11 inches long. And that way we can recreate close to what the original piece had. 
once I had it cut I am going to round off the edges once again this time I'm just going to sand them down a little bit with my electric sander and that way it'll have a little bit of rounded edges like the original piece had and then even though it was already white I am going to give it a fresh new coat of white paint this is by rust-oleum in the linen white and then we're going to let it dry and then of course using my cricut i cut out the coffee bar sign with a little black border um, i did make the letters a little bit bigger than what the original had it i just thought i just wanted them you know just a little bit bigger but overall look and style i think it looks exactly the same the original um let me remind you what it looked like it was metal but mine's wood or paneling, but I think it turned out super close and very, very cute. I love it. For the next inspiration piece, I found this Woodstock Rustic round serving board for $101 and I thought I can recreate it for a lot less. I already had this piece of round wood from a Target dollar spot little um, tear tray that I broke down apart because I didn't need it anymore and um, I had this piece left over and I thought it was perfect. So super easy. I'm just going to stain it again using the Rust-Oleum chalked glaze in the brown let it dry then i'm going to take this thrifted belt and i'm going to cut a piece now i thought at first i thought i can just use those same shears that i used earlier and cut a piece but it was not straight so then i just cut a piece long enough that will resemble the original piece and now i'm going to use my rotary cutter here and my mats that way i can have as straight cut as possible And one last thing I want to remind you that if you are enjoying this video, give me a thumbs up. Giving me a thumbs up helps this channel and this video reach more people and grow. And that did the trick. So now it's time to just apply it. And it's so simple. I just used some thumbtacks from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to place one end first. Um, kind of press the little thumbtack onto the belt piece. And then I'm just going to hammer it in and that way it's going to be nice and secure. And I did that same thing on the other side. And we're just about done with this one. And I think this one turned out adorable. Now it's not the same size, mine's a lot smaller. But I think overall it turned out super cute. Again, a little bit lighter in color, but overall same look, same style. And I think it's stunning. I love it. I'm definitely going to keep this one. <laughs> but this is it for today. I am so happy that I got through these and I think they turned out pretty cool. But let me know in the comments what you think. Do you think I nailed it or do you think I failed it? Um, and also let me know which one is your favorite. If you're visiting for the first time, thank you for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you consider joining our YouTube family. And if you are returning, thank you so much for coming back. I always appreciate you coming back week after week supporting my channel. If you want to watch more dupe inspiration, click on this end card here and I know you're going to love what you see. I'll see you later and have a blessed day. Bye!